Dream Are we talking about Harry Potter? Professor what would Tom? be your favorite? I'm almost done with the Hogwarts Wh- Legacy game. What would be the class? <laughs> what would be the class that you would m- be like most excited to go to at Hogwarts? Oh, what class? Yeah, what class? Mm, that's a good question. The sweatshirt smells. Probably charms. Charms? Yeah. Who wouldn't want to learn magic spells? So what would your favorite, what class would you want to most go to? Um, uh-huh. I don't know enough about Hogwarts. Do you, do you have different, uh, what are the different options? Okay, well, Jacob, um, as Brandon's best friend. <laughs> what are the different options you for need classes to, at Hogwarts? You need yeah. to sit down with him. I mean, I've only, I, I've watched on them your, all. Turn on your the HBO. TV. Yeah. And educate this Is man Is anyone else excited Harry that they're going to release like a, a new one? No, the like series. Yeah. Seven seven years, ten episodes a year? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. Let's do this. I personally, I would have loved if they went back to Lily. That's Yeah. Started from the beginning. Wow. That's all I want. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been key. But we'll take it. I guess I'll take it. I have no, I was, I have no idea what's going on right now. This morning, um, Jacob jumped in the group chat, and I just got to read what was in his morning brew. Yeah, my morning uh, brew. <laughs> Good morning. Does anyone else read morning brew? No, do not. I know, oh, I know I, but I might now. After you, you should try. It's this. great. They like summarize all the news, snippet. It's Ooh, great. It's fun. I, I, love I love the it. cliff yeah. notes of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. cliff notes are key. Uh, It says, good morning. A new AP NORC poll found that about 70% of Americans believe in angels, while only 56% believe in the devil. But 100% believe it's not butter. (laughs) So, okay, so... So we're starting. So this, and that's so, the intro. This is throwing me off. Ah, this is throwing me off. Oh, oh yeah. This is throwing me off so that, much. That, I'm still. I'm still. That would be the intro. That's I'm, the intro. I, I'm, I'm still on uh, just trying to realize how I've never been. I've never felt as ignorant on a subject <laughs> as I did when you guys talked about uh, Harry Potter for the last 20 minutes. I don't so, know any. I've never seen Harry Potter. Never yeah. read the books. Okay, so we're kindred spirits on that. Yes. All right. All right. So I will. I will pick up. I'll pick up. <laughs> but this. This well, is. Uh, I got to get used to. You got to fit. Oh, finish she- whatever you were going to say with the morning brew. I was just going to say, um, oh. let's talk about angels <laughs> and demons. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone's going to love someone who can protect them and, you know, keep them safe. Guardian angels. But a demon? No. Mm-mm. I was actually surprised by that poll, though, that there's that many people that are open to the concept of spiritual beings or spirit- like yeah. spiritual reality beyond. Yeah. So that that fact in and of itself should be an encouragement that, you know, we can engage in these conversations in some type of way, even if they don't you know believe in Christianity or whatever. That is a, a way in. But I think that I think that this speaks to, you know, we joke around and talk a little bit about some of these pop shows and, and, and whatnot. But I do think, at least for Christians, a lot of the times our theology comes more from pop culture mm-hmm. than it does from Scripture itself. Um, you know, you're talking about spiritual things, you know, oftentimes we think of, uh, okay, so I'm going I'm to pull back the curtain a little bit and uh, tell you a little, tell a little, a little something about it. I know, we're me. all yeah. like, hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of my favorite shows growing up, uh, and still is one of my favorite shows, is Little House on the Prairie. I might have said that before, cause I, but I can't remember. So Little House on the Prairie. That's cute. Right along. That's cute. That's, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was thinking of something else. You can't but say cute. You can't say it. cute. Right along with Sanford and Son, All in the Family, Twilight Zone, all that type of stuff. Anyway, that's a story for another day. He, he's just going to sit here and act. Like he's going to put Little House on the Prairie and Sanford and Son and the Twilight, Twilight Zone all on the same level. Yeah. Like that's all the same, <laughs> same genre. Like I'm still trying to get over Little House on yeah. the Prairie. Like, you still can't get over the fact that I talked about City of Angels. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's interesting. I, yeah. When I think of Twilight Zone, I think of the Tower of Terror ride, which I love. But yeah. that is maybe that has I don't know. Does that I, anyway? Well, continue. Fun, <laughs> fun fact: One of the main characters on there, her nickname is Half Pint, and Brayden's nickname is Half Pint after Laura Ingalls. So anyway, let me get back to everyday theology. Did so, you read the books too? No, no. Chantel did 
but I do have the entire DVD collection. So are there yeah. angels and demons in Little House on the Prairie? Is that the curtain you're pulling back, like that you're going to tell us? Not that, but uh, Michael Landon, so he was one, probably the most well-known uh, <laughs> actor on the okay. show. He also had a show in the 90s called Highway to Heaven. And okay. a lot of times, see, I, now I'm, I'm making the bridge, you know, I'm, I'm bringing it, I'm bringing You it guys over. realize between the two of you, anybody yeah. listening to this under the age of 20 has already turned us off. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Here, let me help no you. Let me help, help. Let me help <laughs> right our younger audience. Um, Little House on the Prairie starred um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Kyle Richards. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't get that reference, but hopefully We brought them all back. We, we brought them all, all back. back. All right, good, good. Yep. All right, good. So anyway, so there's a show. So there's, so he was in a show called uh, Highway to Heaven. and But this show um dealt with him being like a guardian angel of sorts and being on heaven or uh, excuse me uh, from heaven on earth and having to do a bunch of good good deeds to earn his wings mm -hmm. and so I, I think a lot of times when we talk about the study of angels angel angelology mm -hmm. and whatnot um is that there one for demons too Demonology. Oh, I mean, I don't think wow, it's me. <laughs> I, I, wish it was, I wish it was a little bit more creative than that, but yeah. Like we have just soteriology, and then I was like, well, yeah. let's just add ology to the end of demon. Yeah. So when, <laughs> when we when we when we learn more about Reve, it's like Reve Reveology, right? That's scary. Yeah. Every day Reveology. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah. So a lot a lot of a lot of times pop culture. So when we think about angels, I can't tell you how many conversations I've been in where people talk about like guardian angels. Right. You know, we pray about well, will God send a, a angel to, to guard over me and, and stuff like that and we talk we have these types of conversations and then even when we talk about things like hell you know it often more parallels something like Dante's Inferno the 14th 14th century right. uh, poem in which Dante uh, part of it is, is talking about Dante and his journey through hell it's more emblematic of what's going on there and in the, in the depictions of torture and stuff there you know I, I do think a lot of the the pop culture, the things that we watch, the things that we read, all that kind of stuff affects how we view spiritual things of the Bible. And it's an important thing for us to discuss because um, spirituality is such a huge, significant part of Christianity. It affects how we pray. It affects how we talk to one another. It affects our relationship with Christ and how we understand uh, the things that we encounter in our lives as well. So anyway, I just wanted to... Yeah, I'm curious on. though, even before we jump into maybe some of what we we know and, and dialogue a little bit more about that. I think one of the interesting things about this conversation is kind of the cultural reality of navigating mm -hmm. these conversations around the spiritual realm, spiritual beings. It seems like we live in this culture that is both spiritual, but also highly naturalistic at the same time. It's like, it's like the value of naturalism and materialism is so high in our culture that almost to talk about the spiritual realm or talk about angels or demons, you got a whole swath of people that's like, okay, you're like cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And then, but on the flip side, there seems to be this like spiritual, you know, curiosity that people seem to have with spiritual things, spiritual practices. Like, so how do we, how do we navigate conversations in this kind of you know, as, as a Christian, like we don't want to seem crazy, but at the same time, like, so Brandon, I know you've dialogued a lot in, in situations and places where you try to help people understand a supernatural worldview in relation to kind of the naturalistic worldview that we have. Like, how do you approach yeah. that reality? Like, yeah, I, I think that, um, we talked about this in a previous episode dealing with this like everyday conversations in general, but I, I always try to keep questions at the top of mind. So trying to understand like the, the what, the why, and the how of things. Not to give them a bunch of questions so it feels like I'm drilling them, but just like naturally like, so like tell me a little bit like, what, what do you mean by whatever? Or why do you believe this? Or how did you come to believe that? And that, that actually helps me to best understand like, okay, how then can I talk about how Christianity fits within, um, you know, what, 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 whatever their, their story might be. So questions are always, always top of mind. I think for me, when I'm dealing with someone from a more naturalistic uh, perspective, then I ask questions or talk about things that naturalism doesn't account for. Um, like, I mean, like simple, like virtues, like love and justice or uh, morality. Everyone has some sense of morality, but naturalism doesn't account for an objective moral, you know, framework, a subjective one, sure, but we all know that 
subjective morality can lead to all sorts of things depending upon who's in power at the time. Um, if for, for someone who is just like generally spiritual, I do think, and actually you, um, I think you gave this quote from Augustine uh, last, um, in your sermon la last Sunday, and I'm gonna paraphrase it, but essentially Augustine said that our hearts are restless until we, we find God. And I think, I think those who are spiritual, they feel that restlessness within them. So there's that nugget that they, that they feel and, they, and they're aware that they feel that. But I, we live in a culture right now where it can feel like you're being intolerant. If you say, hey, I am this, and therefore if you believe in this, that means you necessarily don't believe in X, Y, and Z. And that can feel exclusive and therefore intolerant. Um, so I try to help them to understand like creating almost like a smorgasbord of spiritualities where you're pulling from different things um, isn't, isn't uh, it's, it's often at a front to each of these religions because you're just making your own religion up and where's the where the where's the truth in that so yeah. those are some principles I, I go by yeah that was really deep because when i think of angels and demons like in the bible <laughs> i'm over here thinking about like how angels in the bible look like creepy furbies like I, they oh, have yeah. like seven eyes they like it's like they're very they're not these beings that we like see in movies or tv or like i think of that well, poll where they're like oh it's like we think it's our grandma's our guardian angel or whatever and like you're reading about angels in scripture and you're like these things sound terrifying well i think that i think what that actually brings up an interesting point reve because i think one of the things we need to to always not always but i think we need to be careful of is i think inherent in the way many people perceive the reality of the spiritual realm, angels, demons, is we, we've blanketed a lot of things together that uh, that scripture doesn't quite do in that reality. For instance, we seem to have a tendency to refer to any spiritual entity on the positive side as things as angels and any spiritual entity on the negative side as demons. But that's not entirely the case. So when we see pictures, for instance, uh, of spiritual beings like the seraphim in Isaiah 6 where they have two wings that cover their face two wings that cover their like they're never actually referred to as angels mm -hmm. angels are specifically messengers from God and oftentimes when angels are encountered in scripture they don't have wings mm -hmm. which is which is a common false idea they're usually very almost not humans but human like with a, with a greater aura a greater sense of a greater sense of power and reality so I think even recognizing that the Bible delineates between different spiritual beings when it engages that conversation or that reality. Okay, so then here's a question for you. If angels are messengers from God, does that still happen today? Or can it still happen today? Can it's yeah because like you think about it like well can's always I I never say no to what God could do. So well, true. <laughs> okay, is. fair, fair, fair. But like I just feel like in biblical times like so i sent the guys this TikTok today and it, our friend michaela sent it to us and it was all about how like in biblical times people dreamed and these angels appeared to them and they were like really intense and it was like interpret this and i'm gonna give you this message and like now today like we dream of like the dumbest things like i, I it's like so stupid what we dream about and so m i guess my question is is like do angels still appear to people? Like, is that still a thing? Is that how God is delivering words today to people or encouragement to people or even care? Like if we look at like the story of Elijah and it, I, I believe if I'm interpreting this correctly, an angel came to him and cared for him in the wilderness. Does that still happen? Or even like in Hebrews 13, two, it says, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. So, which is an interesting idea, right? That you could interact with a, what, what you would perceive as a regular person in showing hospitality, but it's actually a messenger from God like that, you know, um, An which is awfully angel Yeah. Right? Yep. There you go. There's there's, not, there's no word for There's word your word, word for the day. <laughs> Brandon's word of the day. He gave he, he gave me the alley oop, so I had That's to, right. Yeah, Please define. Ahead. Well, an angel 
angelophony, if I can say it right, is just when and uh, the rare occasions where an angel uh, appears to a person, and I believe it's in bodily bodily form as well. So it, okay. it's it's rare that it happened. Is that and, the same uh, thing that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah to Lot when the two angels showed up, or is that different? That'd be, that'd be a similar example. Yeah, yeah, that'd be similar. Or, or the so. um, at the uh, the the tomb uh, on the shoulder away, but anyway, yeah. yeah, you were saying. No, so I I mean I think one I think it's probably important for us to recognize nowhere in scripture do we see angels as as messengers being the regular way in which God communicates to his people. Mm -hmm. They're always supernatural um, and kind of extraordinary circumstances. The primary way God communicates to his people is through the revelation of his word. So whether that's Torah in the Old Testament, which is the foundation, um, or whether that's the full canon and what we have in the New Testament, um, God does speak to his people through the prophetic voice. And now on the other side of Christ with the spirit, we have the Holy Spirit. God's given that ability, I think, in, in certain levels of gifts to people to be able to communicate. Um, so all that to say, I do think that there can be instances where angels still minister and still work, um, but it's not the regular primary way. And I think also recognizing that the potential for the demonic influence and for n negative spiritual beings to influence, we always, the Bible always pushes us towards discernment, mm -hmm. right? And recognizing if we're claiming to have engaged a spiritual being or a spiritual reality, we need to be extremely discerning in terms of whether that is genuinely a messenger of God or whether that is, um, is a false uh, or someone impersonating that reality. Um, okay, okay, so what about... But, but all that to say, that it wouldn't be yeah. regular. Yeah, what about this, though, then? Um, and I can't remember, I always... I apologize, I always get Elijah and Elisha, Elisha. <laughs> confused. I think it was Elijah, but correct me, please, if I'm wrong. Wasn't there a moment where, in Scripture, he was with someone and, like their eyes were open to like this spiritual warfare that was going on around the them, the chariots and all of that. Like, so, so for me as a believer, when I read that or see that, I wonder is today in our time, like even in this room, is there a battle going on that we can't see between angels and demons? Like, is that happening right now? Well, I, I think, in, I think in general that, we live, so uh, Dr. Craig Keener has a book called, or a two-volume book called, two, yeah, two-volume book set called uh, Miracles. And part of the point that he's making in this set is that, hey, there are all these miracles that are happening all over the world that us living in the U.S., a uh, highly technological mm -hmm. society, we've become more desensitized to spiritual things because of our, um, of our prioritizing technology and, and mm -hmm. maybe modernity and some, some other things like that. Um, and so I do think like overall in our culture, there's a desensitizing to those things. Mm -hmm. I also think with Christians, and um, I don't know if you want to make a point on Elijah, and if so, I, I, can, I can stop here because this right. might go into some Heiser stuff, but I'll just, I'll just mention it and then maybe we can come back to it. I do think as Christians, we need to have, uh, we need to have a proper understanding of the spiritual things within scripture because there is much more depth to the spiritual elements of scripture that I think a lot of um, a lot of Christians uh, know. And uh, yeah, maybe we can talk a little bit about the divine counsel and, and stuff like that. So I don't know how much I'm gonna go down that realm, but. but well, yeah, no, but I, I think that's I think that's important, right? Yeah, so so yeah. you bring up the idea from Elisha in in this reality of praying to have the eyes open to see these these spiritual mm -hmm. forces that are at work i think to brandon's point we we often live uh, obscured from really the biblical worldview which includes the spiritual realm right god mm -hmm. originally created and designed the world mm -hmm. um really to where heaven which is god's realm, which we would call the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. right? That, that's how the idea is. God is spirit, um, was meant to overlap with the physical, with earth. Mm -hmm. um, because of sin, there's been a separation. That's not the case. 
But there really is a robust spiritual realm that scripture points towards yeah. that overlaps with our reality and mm-hmm. influences and interacts with the reality around us. And, um, and I think that we've not done a good job at time. We, we have to be careful because we've either received some of that imagery from pop culture, not from scripture, yeah. or we've minimized it so much that we, we even... Like, we don't we, recognize it. Yeah, we don't recognize yeah. it. We don't yeah. have categories for it. We don't understand it. Yeah. So when Paul says things like Ephesians, you know, well, our our battle isn't against flesh and blood, against power and principalities in the in the heavenly places. And even the, what he's pointing to there in rulers and authorities, he, he's pointing to spiritual beings that seem to have influence on the rule of the world. We almost minimize that to a point to say like, well, he's just talking about, you know, and yeah. it's like, well, no, he has a whole robust vision from what the Old Testament points towards that influences why he's saying that. But we, we've minimized that so much. Yeah, it's interesting because I'll never forget um, this one time I was in California um, and I, I was in L.A., which, you know, L.A. has a couple cute parts and the rest is a dumpster fire. Um, <laughs> but my friend and I were in downtown L.A. and we were walking back to our car. And all of a sudden, as we were walking down the street, like, we look at each other and she's like, do you feel that? And I was like, yeah, the air just feels like heavy and not like pollution Mm. heavy. Like it just feels thick. Like we were both kind of overcome with this sense of like darkness. And we were like, this is the weirdest thing. And so the light changed, we crossed the street and instantly the air felt lighter. And we were like, that's so weird. I wonder what happened. And we looked across the street and we were literally standing in front of the Scientology building in downtown Hollywood. And I, I'll never forget that because I, it was one of those moments where I was like, oh my goodness, like this is very much real. Like it felt very real in that moment that there was a sense of darkness over that building or, or, and, and I can't say that it was demons or whatever, but it, it it brings me to that idea of yes there is something happening in a spiritual wa- realm that like sometimes we are desensitized to like sometimes we don't realize it's happening when it's very apparent you know if you're just taking a minute yeah, to think, recognize it i think that awareness is is so important um actually i was in front of that same scientology building did like, you feel a, the darkness a few, a few months ago i didn't feel it uh well, maybe but that day something i was, was probably going on. more paying attention to all the the uh what's it called the, the stars uh, the, the walk of stars of yeah, yeah so i was yeah my spiritual uh spider spidey sense was was uh, not tingling at that moment uh, but i do think that yeah, that was a good point that you that you bring up about that awareness is so and so important in and of itself um that these spiritual things and what i don't we have to strike a balance between being aware that the that this is a, a real reality that we deal with and not like obsessing over it as mm-hmm. well yeah um, i agree also being aware of things like you know there's popular popular movies like you know the exorcist or, or whatever where that has all this demon possession and there's actually a lot of different in, uh, instances um during our time where people talk about being demon possessed and all that so a lot, I've met a lot of Christians who talk, who are concerned about them being possessed by demons and can this happen and all of that. And just understanding that, you know, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit yeah, you and your be. body is literally a temple to God, then you can't be filled uh, with, uh, you can't be possessed by a demon. Now, do I think that demon possession is real? Yeah, I think it can happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it happens with you know, how much regularity it happens, but if you are a Christian filled with the Holy Spirit, then that's that's not a reality uh, for you. It's not something that you should be uh, worried about. Yeah. So so talk to me a little bit, Jacob, about um, how demons work today and how maybe we kind of talked a little bit about maybe how angels would appear today or, or what that would look like. But like, how are demons working today? Because, I mean, scripture talks about the devil, you know, on the prowl. And I know he can't be, he's not like God, he's not omnipresent. So he has to have people to help him, I would assume. So, so what does that look like today? I would say demons work from, uh, if you were to put it in a range, I would put it on a range from the level of control to the level of influence. Okay. So you see demonic activity in the sense of, I mean, Brandon just alluded to it, but, um, 
you know, to demonic possession is the issue of, a, of somebody actually surrendering so much to demonic influence that they now control them. They have actual physical control over their body. The ability, you see that in scripture, in, in Jesus encountering people who are demon possessed, where that mm-hmm. demon has control. Oftentimes I think demonic and spiritual forces seek to, uh, to create a level of influence in us. Mm-hmm. A lot of times that comes through lies, falsehood, deception. We see that in scripture, um, that there's this reality. I mean, really in the sense of these spiritual beings are anti God they're and they're anti the goodness of his creation. So we see demonic influence in anything that is trying to bring destruction and chaos into the order of, of God's world. And often that comes through the influence of, of human beings. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I think that that really is the range. I think you also see some reality in terms of demonic spiritual beings who seek to wield power and influence in the power of the world, in the, in the realms, in the, uh, in, you know, different, uh, power structures, for lack of a better mm-hmm. phrase, maybe at times that you see in the world to create influence in false religion, um, in in false ideologies. Uh, so I think all of that, it, but really you could say anything that is anti-God, that is seeking the destruction of creation is demonically influenced. Yeah, and demonically I, I think that, that, that's such a great point. I love all those adjectives you gave for like how, um, you know, demons work work now. And I think if you think about our our modern, um, our contemporary times, what's like a popular phrase right now? Fake news, right? Mm-hmm. So misinformation, disinf- disinformation, and malinformation are all very prevalent. Um, and just to, I guess just to define those three real quick, uh, disinformation refers to uh, false information that spread intentionally. Uh, misinformation refers to false information that's spread unintentionally, like spreading a Facebook post that you think might be true, but it's actually not. Mm-hmm. Malinformation refers to um, uh, factual information that's shared with the intent to harm. And if you think about those three things and how they um, how they're really encompassed in our modern day, I mean that's the sort of the definition of, of chaos, of, of all these things that, that demons like to do. So if you would ask me if our, our uh, spiritual things and our like demons in particular are very prevalent now, I would say that this would be a time that they, you know, will sort of be chomping at the bit, you know, to really try and seek that influence over people using things like social media and whatnot to really uh, stir the pot and create all types of, of, of chaos and confusion mm-hmm. and uh, and things of that nature. So does that mean that all this stuff about aliens are really demons <laughs> causing chaos? Where's our disembodied voice, Jennifer, to answer answer this? Um, <laughs> I definitely think that centipedes are a part of the demonic world because... <laughs> Like, as soon as I hear demonic, I think of centipedes. Like, why? What God, did a why? centipede do to you? Yeah, so it's, it's a backstory. Exist. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I get Exist. it. Yeah. Um, I get but it. this is to back up a little bit, a few minutes. When you were talking about being in L.A., I took a trip with a friend um, who's also a believer. And we were, like, super excited because we just wanted to go down to New Orleans and eat some really good food. Mm-hmm. And so we planned a 48-hour trip. And we got down there and did not enjoy any of it. And neither of us said anything because I think we got down there. We had these expectations of having a ball, like just, you know, beignets, gumbo, all this stuff. But every like everywhere we went, we were just kind of like, and so finally at the end of the first day, I looked at her and she, we like looked at each other. She goes, you feel that too? And I was like, yes. I was like, we can figure it out. And I was like, it just feels dark here. There just is something here that feels dark. And I, it's one of the very few times that I felt that way. I've probably, I've been to so many different cities across the country, but I will never forget how I felt when I went to New Orleans. And Mm -hmm. I've actually talked to, I think it was you, Garrett, Garrett um, had a similar experience and, you know, just knowing the history of like a lot of like just witchcraft and things that they practice down there is it you know like to me I was like I'm all set on New Orleans because I don't you know I I felt the heaviness as well so I just wanted to by the way one time I actually interviewed a Satanist really yeah here at the uh, at the Gibraltar Center and uh when I was uh getting my apologetics degree wow yeah 
uh, so there was a um you can cut this if you need to but there was a there was a <laughs> Jay's like no <laughs> <laughs> the people want to hear it yes. there was actually a battle between uh two different satanist groups here in detroit they wanted to erect a um some type of building or whatever downtown so there's the satanists who believed that uh, who believe in Satan yeah. as a uh, spiritual being, there are those Satanists who are actually atheists, which seems incongruent. Um, and she was she was the former of those. So yeah, I had to interview her at the Gibral Gibraltar Trade Center and learn all about her her background, and actually how she grew up in Roman Catholicism, and she experienced some church hurt that you mentioned before. And I think that's what was the impetus for drive, to drive her out of that and to look for something else. But she was a nice lady. She just uh, preferred the color black and skulls and that type of stuff so so then that leads out of my alien question to is the illuminati oh my goodness <laughs> you're just going and the gold all ring <laughs> and all of that selling your soul to the devil is that a thing because you all brushed the over the Illuminati alien question. Thing? You all brushed over the alien okay, I'm question. Okay, I'm not brushing over the <laughs> alien question. I, th I think it's an interesting question, but here's my, here's my concerns is that I think we often move and get distracted. By the distraction? By the distraction. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not saying, but I think like there there is a natural sense of like aliens, the Illuminati. There, there's some of that which I always want to be careful of because it, it feels like at times then that we move the discussion of this. I'm not saying you're doing this, but I think we have to be careful of moving or sensing this discussion of spiritual things into the realm of kind of like conspiracy, conspiracy. conspiracy and yeah. supernatural. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's where a lot of people like almost want to put this category and it's almost like, oh yeah, angels, demons, whatever. Right. But apparently more people believe in it than we think. And it's like, well, well, hold on. Let, let's step back and just recognize, one, there are things in our world that are inexplainable by a naturalistic worldview. Yeah. So, like, this isn't conspiracy we're talking about, right? And as soon as you assume or, or, or believe in, in the philosophical, philosophical um, idea of God, which we would all attest to— mm -hmm. At some point, you you naturally assume a spiritual reality at that at that yeah. point, and so that's where it's like I always want to be careful to say there's philosophical and biblical and experiential reasons for what we believe about the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. Now, whether how that relates to the question of aliens or the Illuminati, yeah. I don't know, but I just want to be careful because I think that's where people want to move the categorization. Mm -hmm. And what I want to be careful is to say like, well, no, we're talking about like real entities, like yeah. you guys described real experiences with darkness that actually bring destruction to human beings. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I mean, when I think of Scientology, when I think of, of voodoo, the reality of voodoo and, and some of that religion, like to me, those are as a, as a Christian, those are actually destructive religious forces in the world that do yeah. not lead to the flourishing of humanity, but actually lead to its its demise and hold us in bondage to things that God didn't intend to us. That's a real reality, yeah. right? So again, I'm not dismissing the question of aliens and the Illuminati. <laughs> that might be a whole other discussion. I just really want to be careful because to me, I'm like, this is actually serious. And I'm not saying you're not saying that, but like these are real destructive forces that are right. real spiritual beings that are having a real impact on the world that Jesus really came to defeat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like he really came to defeat the spiritual powers as well as the physical powers that hold the world in bondage in order to bring about the new creation and redemption that God wanted us to bring. And I think that's important that this sometimes angiology, we can get into this place of like, oh, it's kind of hocusy pocusy. Harry Potter world, but it's like, no, this is actually in from a biblical whirlpool worldview serious and, yeah. and, and something we really need to pay attention to. And I think that leads even to a bigger discussion and maybe one we can have at another time. But I think people don't realize like what, like when they say, when Jesus says I conquered death, like what that really means and mm -hmm. like what, like the gravity that that statement holds and, and, and what, what he really did conquer. And I think, I think maybe, like I said, that's a, conversation for another episode but you bring up that point I think the reason I was I was asking that question is because um one of a pastor that I follow he does these like Friday Q&A's and someone had 
asked him like are aliens real whatever and and he didn't go he didn't say they were demons or, or anything like that he just said it's it's a it could easily be a tactic of the enemy to distract us mm. and so that's kind of why I, I, I'm curious because are those some of those tactics that the enemy's using to distract us from what God calls us to so yeah I think the important thing, too, is to remember, like, well, for me, reading Ephesians 6 over and over and really understanding, like, I'm not fighting my coworker or my family member or friend. I'm literally using spiritual weapons to fight spiritual forces that are behind this and mm-hmm. not obsessing over the nitty gritty, like you're saying, us getting wrapped up mm-hmm. in, well, is, the, is this demonic oppression about just knowing that, yeah, there's spiritual warfare and... I have weapons to fight it and mm-hmm. and understanding that is a more important thing because once I read Ephesians 6 and understood that and and I said okay I'm not fighting this person or not that I wanted to fight the person I mean maybe I did one but anyway you got I'm beef with someone in the no, I don't <laughs> I'm not I'm not war- at war with this person I'm yeah. at war with something that I can't see and God has given me the weapons to mm-hmm. fight is that, the more important. And, and the, the, the only weapon given in Ephesians 6 is the word of God. Yep. Yeah. The sword. The only thing we Everything have else is, is a God's, yeah, his truth, his word, his revelation to yep. battle that which is lies, deceptions, exactly. chaos, all mm-hmm. of that, which exactly. is, is important. So Yeah. 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 That, yeah, that's, I, yeah I was going to um, yeah, pick up one. That's, that's a great point. I, I'll say I, I love that, that, that point, Jennifer, because it involves uh, us understanding. It, 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 it impacts how we see how we see one another. Um, and maybe not, and, and remembering the importance of the Imago Day, and that you know we're all we all have this inherent worth, value, and dignity, um, but also that a lot of times when we discuss these things, there's this fear or this trepidation that comes upon us. And I'm reminded of uh, John uh, chapter 16, verses 33, when it says that um, you know in this world you will have trouble, you will have uh, uh, you know, tribulation. There's different things that you're going to encounter, and and I would say that spiritual things would be among those. Uh, but take heart, I have overcome. Uh, I have overcome mm-hmm. this world. So you know, to your previous point, Jacob, we can rest assured that uh, you know Jesus is Jesus has conquered. Or to both of your points, Jesus has conquered all of this, and there shouldn't be any fear on our parts, but just awareness of how uh, Satan and demons uh, move in this world. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's an important point. Whenever we think about these conversations, is we should not approach them with um, too much fascination, nor too much uh, ignorance. Yep. Right? I love the word that you just used, sober. We need a certain sobriety when we have conversations around angelology, demonology, the spiritual realm, um, because I think that at the end of the day, we want to move towards. If I say at the end of the day, one more time, <laughs> gosh, Don't I say worry, this we're phrase getting the shirt so made. many times. It drives me, I, it's driving myself crazy. Check out our merch I'm gonna come store. to church one day. Oh, we're right gonna get, yeah, right you know what Goodness. I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, like, you know how they do swear jars. Well, we're, we're going to do an at the end yeah. of the day jar for you and we'll just put drop quarters in yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So. But I think in these conversations, that's, that's the place we want to aim yeah. is, is having a sober conversation because it is important. And, uh, and so, well, guys, I think there's a, a lot you can talk about in this realm, and I'm sure we'll explore this more and more. Mm-hmm. Uh, Reve still wants us to answer the question of aliens, which I have <laughs> no interest in doing, but I think Brandon <laughs> yeah. might have an opinion. We're going to do it. So we're going we're to do <laughs> we're gonna it. Do but, it. Uh, but what do you guys think? What, do you, what are your thoughts on, on this idea in the spiritual realm? We'd love to hear your comments and feedback. We'd love to know what questions you have and to continue this conversation even beyond this. So... Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Everyday Theology. Thanks for watching Everyday Theology. If you would like more of this content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button.